morning, everyone, and welcome into Wake and Take. It's your boy, Jason, and we've got some football to talk about today. Today, we're talking about dynasty buys. We had a slow news weekend, so we're coming on hot on Monday, giving you 20 players that you need to buy right now in your dynasty fantasy football league. So go ahead, take out your coffee, sit back, relax, and enjoy the show. All right, everyone. Welcome into the chat. Good morning to you. Glad to see you all this morning. Check it out, Applied Literature. Yes, sir, in the chat. Guys, while I get talking about my 20 dynasty buys, feel free to drop some of your dynasty buys right now. We can maybe talk about them at the back of the show, time permitting. We've got 20 of them. I've got quarterbacks. I've got running backs. I've got wide receivers. I've got tight ends. I've got 20 players that you need to be buying a dynasty right now. So let's go ahead and get started. We're going to start with the quarterback position, and we're going to start with some Jared Goff action. One of this guy, this guy, Jared Goff, one of the better quarterbacks in the league. It's just plain and simple. I know he kind of flamed out in Los Angeles, but since he's been in Detroit, he's been completely revitalized and just genuinely on fire. And yet his fantasy football value just is not there. I know it's kind of age and I, I know he's just like kind of right there at, at the, like the point of dynasty quarterbacks at quarterback 19, quarterback 18, where it really is hard to move forward unless you're a really, really young guy. But as you'll notice with the theme of a lot of these guys, I'm saying to buy a dynasty, all that really matters is points. Really, all that matters for your football team is points and plain and simple Jared Goff puts those up right now he's quarterback 19 on player profiler quarterback 18 on keep trade cut but in back-to-back -back seasons he's been top 15 in points per game and last year he was top five in both pass yards and passing touchdowns had 4,571 pass yards along with 30 passing touchdowns and if you go over to his profile at playerprofiler.com you can see a ton of metrics to where he was really, really good at them. And I'll just name them. Second most pass attempts. Fourth, mo fourth most red zone attempts. Ninth in team pass plays per game. Had the eighth best protection rate among quarterbacks last year. Already mentioned the passing yards and passing touchdowns. Top five in that. Had, and I mean, seventh in adjusted yards per attempt. Ninth in yards per attempt in general. Sixth in clean pocket completion percentage eighth and play action completion percentage sixth and deep ball completion percentage fifth in true completion percentage in general sixth and accuracy rating eighth and epa i mean geez guys what else do you want from a quarterback first in accuracy rating versus man fifth in passer rating versus zone so he's getting it done against both defenses Along with having one of the best cores of weapons in the league with Sam Laporta, Amon Ross, St. Brown, Jameer Gibbs, and maybe Jamison Williams can finally break out. And the Lions are coming out and saying they're taking best player available, so maybe they could draft another wide receiver or something. Either way, Jared Goff has already had the production, has the tools, and it's just a great quarterback to be buying, even in single quarterback leagues. Like if you just want a budget quarterback to take you over the top in single QB so you can have the rest of your team good. Goff is the guy. The rest of these quarterbacks pretty much are going to be super flex guys, but Jared Goff is the man. He's a stud, and I have no idea why he's so easy to acquire. I really, really don't. I mean, like, you want quarterbacks on good offenses, and he's on one of the best of them, and he's putting up a great amount of points. Get yourself some Jared Goff, guys. The Goffster. The Goffster. <laughs> Number two is quarterback Bryce young and the deal with bryce young is this one's a little bit more projective but you know at quarterback 21 quarterback 20 on keep trade cut he's even cheaper than jared goff and younger so that's kind of the thing right whereas bryce young at his age only one year in the league he could have a good season and catapult up into like the top 15 even higher i kind of know that jared goff's value is insulated because of his age but that's not really the case here with bryce young and while it was a very disappointing rookie season, he was still valued as the QB 10 coming into the league. It was impossible to get those one-on-one draft picks. And this was a player that a lot of people were hyped on aside from the size. We saw it at Alabama. He's a really good passer. He was the number one overall pick for a reason. And we have to assume that at some point, he's at least going to be okay, right? He's at least going to be fine. And we see the Panthers right now investing in weapons, investing in the offensive line, going out and get a quarterback coach in Dave Canales to kind of help turn things around. 
So uh, you really just got to think that Bryce Young next year and going forward will be better than he was last season. Last season was awful, but a lot of it was the situation. And that was a situation that myself included, but a lot of people were saying to just stay away from. That Panthers coaching staff was terrible. The offensive line was terrible. And there were really no weapons. That's not necessarily the case this year. He's had a year now in the league. I think he's going to be okay. And we saw that flash last year, if you remember, against the Packers. Had 300 yards, two touchdowns, no interceptions. I mean, that's the kind of performances that we've been waiting for from him. We saw one last year. We're seeing better weapons. We're seeing a better coach. Why not see if you can get Bryce Young on the cheap and see what happens? I mean, this is probably going to be his floor. Let's be honest. I don't think he drops much further. The other quarterbacks that are below him are players that have had yet to be drafted or are in the twilight of their career. So Bryce Young, a good little value right now, a guy that you could be buying, especially in super flex leagues for your QB2 or even three, if you're that stacked in the room. But a good guy. I like it. Project a little bit better season next year. Uh, for sure. And yeah, Deontay Johnson's arrival, I think helps a little bit. I'm not a big Deontay Johnson guy, but I also don't think the Panthers are done. I think they're primed to take a wide receiver with pick 33 right at the beginning of the second round. And that's going to help even more. So get yourself some Bryce Young right now while you still can. And the final quarterback I want to talk about is one of the goats of the game. Matthew Stafford, quarterback 25 right now, quarterback 27 on keep trade cut. And what kind of boggles my mind about it is Matthew Stafford has been incredibly productive, really his entire NFL career, but especially even over the last few seasons in Los Angeles, minus the injury. He was literally, literally a top five quarterback just a couple seasons ago with uh, honestly a worse offense around him. I mean, it was really just Cooper Cup that he was throwing the ball to. Nice Cooper Cup and Puka Nakua, Kyron Williams helping out with that run game. Probably an opportunity for another weapon to be added. They've already added to the tight end room. And just last year, he had nearly 4,000 yards. So he obviously was taking a step forward and only had cut for 12 of those games. So next year with a fully healthy Cooper Cup, year two, Puka Nakua, everything just getting better on the Rams offense in general, a competitive NFC West. I think Matthew Stafford is a great value right now. And he's only 36 years old which is not that old for a quarterback. I mean, you could project at least a couple more seasons from him. He's literally the same age as like Kirk Cousins, only a couple months older than him. And Kirk Cousins is ranked a lot higher, right? And Kirk Cousins is kind of just a, a poor man's Matthew Stafford. I don't mean it in a bad way, but we like Kirk Cousins because he's on an offense that we think will be like the Rams. So why not just get the quarterback on the Rams? I don't, I, I, I don't know. Call me crazy, call me crazy, but go ahead and get some Matthew Stafford, guys. And do what I did in the Trade Gods League. Maybe see if you could pull off the Matthew Stafford Cooper Cup stack, as I believe Cooper Cup is a great value and someone you should be buying right now in Dynasty. We'll go ahead and move on to the wide receivers. Cooper Cup is sitting right now at wide receiver 35, wide receiver 36 on keep trade cut. But last year in October, just October of last year, Cooper Cup was the wide receiver 13, and tons of people were buying him. Tons of people were still thinking that he had lots of left in the tank. And, you know, outside of the injury, we still saw some good performances from him. And a lot of the same arguments of, oh, well, his, his, his type of play style ages gracefully. He should have a lot of years left in the league. He should still get a ton of volume, still score touchdowns. All of those arguments are still there. And right now, a wide receiver 36-ish range. I don't see why you wouldn't be taking a chance on this guy, especially if you're a competitive team. I mean, last year in even only his 12 games, still had 20 plus points in four of them. So a third of his games last year, he had 20 plus points. He had 19 red zone targets last year in only 12 games. That was ninth most in the league. Again, missing like a third of the season, a fourth of the season. So an uh, extremely productive wide receiver, even though he was not 100%. He still had the seventh highest snap share, still was on the field a ton. And you can look at his game logs and be like, okay, he had a 100-yard game, a 150-yard game, a 115-yard game, another 100-yard game, multiple touchdowns. I mean, Cooper Cup still showed enough last year to where he should be really good next year. And again, was still amongst the top of the league in red zone targets, sharing the field with Puka Nakua. That's clearly an area that Cooper Cup is still going to be successful in next year. Still going to be the red zone threat. His target share goes up from 25% to 31% in the red zone. 
go get yourself some Cooper Cup, guys, especially if you're competing. I mean, this is a guy that is way too easy to buy right now for his uh, pr productivity that you're going to get. So it's going to be nice. It's going to be really, really nice. Uh, so we'll go ahead and move on to another wide receiver. This is actually a great question. Who is a wide receiver one on the Rams? And it's Cooper Cup. Cooper Cup is the wide receiver one. I ask you guys right now, would any of you, would a single one of you redraft 2024 only? Would any of you be surprised if Cooper Cup outscored Puka Nakua last, or next season? The answer is no. I would not be surprised in the slightest if Cooper Cup scored more points in 2024 than Puka Nakua. And that's why I'm buying because Puka Nakua is a top eight dynasty asset who is not or could get you that, right? But Cooper Cup is a top 36 dynasty asset who could also get you that top 10 production. So get yourself some Cooper Cup. And we'll go ahead and throw another older wide receiver into this conversation and say DeAndre Hopkins. Same kind of thing, right? Would any of you be surprised if DeAndre Hopkins outscored Calvin Ridley next year? And the answer is no. The answer is just plain and simple. No, guys, DeAndre Hopkins, I don't care about the age. He's still one of the best wide receivers in the league. Like if you were drafting a Madden team right now, DeAndre Hopkins would get picked early. He's a great wide receiver. Quarterbacks love him. NFL teams love him. And we saw last year, even in a really terrible situation, that Tennessee Titans offense was terrible last year. He still finished with 13 points per game, 1,000 receiving yards, seven touchdowns, had the second highest dominator rating. And you can see some other stuff too. The second most unrealized air yards, almost 1,000, over 1,000 unrealized air yards last year, had the second most air yards in general, the fifth highest air yard share, had the second most deep targets i mean d hop is an unbelievable value right now wide receiver 55 and player profiler wide receiver 62 on keep trade cut and yet he could give you top 10 top 15 production next year pretty pretty easily this tennessee titans offense is gearing up to pass they've invested in the offensive line they went out and gave calvin ridley a bag they moved on from power running back derrick henry in lieu of pass catching running back Tony Pollard, they're going to throw the ball a ton. DeAndre Hopkins is going to score a ton, and it's going to be an awesome offense to watch next year for fantasy football. So get yourself some D-hop while you still can. We'll now talk about DK Metcalf. DK Metcalf is a very interesting one because this is a guy, I mean, he's hard to buy. I'm going to admit it here, but I think that now this is kind of the time where you can sneak in and get yourself some DK Metcalf. I know the story with DK Metcalf is every year we get super hyped for him and every year he performs fine. He does basically enough to where you're not upset about it, but he never really taps into that, that ceiling in terms of his season long production. I mean, really with DK Metcalf, I only top 24 in points per game the last three seasons, but top 24 in points per game the last three seasons. That's not that bad especially when he's wide receiver 24 on both player profiler and keep trade cut. So you're right now getting him at the worst of his production, but he should be able to outproduce that. He's had a thousand yards in back-to-back -back seasons. And in the last two years, he has had less than 10 touchdowns, but last year had the six most red zone targets, had 24 red zone targets last year and not that many touchdowns. And so I think that that's something that I know we say every year that at some point DK Metcalf is going to get the positive regression when it comes to the touchdown department. I think at some point it's going to happen. I really, really do. 134 yards and three touchdown game last year, guys. He had that. We saw the ceiling game, almost 40 points from him. And it's going to happen again next year. I think that this new offense is going to come in and throw the ball a lot more. Uh, they brought in the University of Washington's offensive coordinator, who, of course, threw the ball a ton last year, Pac-12 offense. And it's possible that they go and draft Michael Penix to reunite the two. And that's a quarterback who would be perfect for DK Metcalf. And I just think, especially with Tyler Lockett getting older and JSN being a little bit more of an underneath receiver, that there's still lots of potential for DK Metcalf in his career to finally tap into that ceiling. He's been in the league a long time now, but he's only 26.3. That's not that old. He's had the production and he's at least been consistent, right? He's at least been consistent, even if it isn't that high end production that you really want. Still top 24 in points per game, three straight years and being valued as a wide receiver 24. 
that's all you can ask for, right? That's easy. You can still get a stud for pretty cheap, and I don't see why you wouldn't be doing it right now. Go ahead and get yourself some DK Metcalf. Next is Nico Collins, another player who a lot like DK Metcalf is just a really good profile on a really good offense. DK Metcalf, 6'3", with 98th, 100th percentile workout metrics and 230 pounds somehow, just an absolute beast. But Nico Collins, also a huge dude, 6'4", 215 pounds, and also really, really good workout metrics. And we saw from him last year, hyper-efficiency hyper efficiency. Last year, Nico Collins only had a 22.7% target share. That was 29th in the league. That's not that high, but he had the seventh highest points per game with 17.4 points per game. So take the 29th highest target share and make it the seventh most points per game. That's efficiency. That's productivity, and that is explosiveness. Exactly what you want to see from Nico Collins, who finished last year with 1,300 yards and eight touchdowns on one of the more electric offenses in the league. And what's hurting its value now is this Stefan Diggs trade. Everyone's now going out and buying Stefan Diggs. Some people are going out and buying Tank Dell. But the general sentiment about Dino Collins is you need to be moving on from him, that he's not going to have any opportunity. But that's just not the case. In fact, we talked about it here on Wake and Take. All three wide receivers could get the same target share they got last year. And that still only adds up to about 70% of the targets in this Texans offense. That's fine. So I expect Nico Collins to still get about a 20 to 25% target share and do great next season. Last year, there were seven games that both Tank Dell and Nico Collins were out there healthy. And in both of them, they averaged 18 or more points per game in that span. There's tons of opportunity for all the wide receivers in this offense to feed. And I'm not going to go for the one that got hurt and ended the year on IR. I'm not going to go for the one that's 30 years old. I'm going to be the go for the one that finally broke out, that has a production profile that we've liked for years, a workout metrics profile that we liked for years, and a guy that was hyper effective with not that much volume. Again, only had a 22% target share and finished with the seventh most points per game and had the eighth most receiving yards, the sixth most receptions after catch. He was third in yards per target, second in yards per route run, second in target premium, fourth in points per route run, second in quarterback rating per target, fifth in EPA, fourth in production premium. I mean, this is a profile that screams by. And I don't know why the general sentiment around him is sell. Get yourself some Nico Collins because believe me, guys, Nico Collins is only six months older than Tank Dell. He's been in the league three years and is only six months older than Tank Dell. 25 versus 24 and a half. Both of them are young, but Nico Collins had more production last year, was better on an average fantasy points, will probably be healthier based on his profile of being 6'4", 215 pounds. Get Nico Collins, guys. Don't overthink it. So let's see. That was DK Metcalf, Nico Collins, Cooper Cup, DeAndre Hopkins. Here's Christian Watson. This is one I'm less sold on, but I just like Christian Watson. I've liked him a lot since his rookie year. And at some point, you've just got to take bets on otherworldly profiles. And right now, he's just plummeted. He's just plummeted because he can't stay healthy. And I get it. But... The way I look at it is you're injury prone until you're not. Debo Samuel was injury prone for years and then has a top five season. Christian McCaffrey, injury prone for years, has back-to-back RB1 seasons. At some point, Christian Watson's going to be healthy or at least healthy enough to where maybe he could play 12 to 14 games and you'll be okay. And I just think with that profile, 600 or 6'4", 210 pounds, 98th workout metrics and all the percentiles, really just an absolute explosive athlete and a guy who has shown the the tendency to score touchdowns. We remember his rookie season where, where he tied Randy Moss for touchdowns in a three-game span. Last year, he scored four touchdowns in a three-week span before getting injured again. But when he starts clicking, he just starts clicking. And this Packers offense is epic. It's a great offense. It's It's young. They're throwing the ball a ton. They're investing in it. So I'm going to get the cheapest one. And the cheapest one is somehow Christian Watson, the one with the best profile. I know it's hard. I know it's difficult. I know I see a no in the chat. But again, at some point, you're just injury prone until you're not. 
and we have IR slots for a reason. When you could get a guy who used to be the wide receiver 15 in Dynasty, who's now wide receiver 39 on player profiler and wide receiver 50 on keep trade cut, you can get Christian Watson for pretty cheap right now. And I think it's a risk worth taking on that offense. You could probably get him for a third, ladies and gentlemen. And I don't I can't think of a reason why you wouldn't. If he if he gets hurt again, he gets hurt again. But you're gonna enjoy that stretch where he scores six touchdowns in two games and and is you know, just awesome to watch. I mean, he's just a beast. Uh, so we'll see. We'll see. I agree that it is a make or break year with him, but uh, exactly, you know, it used to be year three was the true breakout year. We've gotten kind of pampered with a lot of these rookies, but I think Christian Watson, he's shown a ton of promise, a ton of ceiling. And at some point he's going to stay healthy. So um, yeah. And I see the question here. You can argue that Watson has easiest path to targets. And yeah, I mean, we saw them manufacturing touches for him. We saw it, whether it be like random jet sweeps or screens or deep shots. So, yeah, I think so. I don't know about the most targets, but I know that he's guaranteed touches and targets. And any one of them could be a touchdown with what we've seen from him on the field. So I'm buying him at his current price. And I'm also buying Marquise Brown at his current price. Definitely varies where you're looking. And he's kind of hard to buy right now with the Rasheed Rice situation. I saw him go for a first in the trade gods league. So, you know, it really just depends. But especially if you could get him at a normal price tag, I still think that there's a lot of people not sold on Hollywood Brown because he just hasn't produced. But the potential has just always been there. The explosiveness has always been there. And it always just seems so close. It just seems so close, whether it's he's overthrown or it like barely hits his fingertips or underthrown. Like it just... You, you watch Marquise Brown low lights and it's like, that could have been a touchdown. It was so close. And I just think that this chief's landing spot is perfect for Hollywood. He's had a thousand air yards and four straight seasons, but only one of those years, he actually had a thousand yards last year. He was 11th in unrealized air yards with 789 yards going unrealized. That's just a ton. And he was 96th in the league last year in catchable target rate. Only a 56% of his targets last year were deemed catchable by player profiler charters. It was hard for him to find success. And yet he still averaged 9.6 points per game, which is the lowest of his career. I mean, he's averaged 10 points per game or higher every single league time he's been in the year. So, you know, it's okay, right? He's been fine. And I think now with the best quarterback of really all time, you can be happy with Marquise Brown and you can expect some production. And if something happens to Rashi Rice, you can expect even more production. But I think even with Rashi Rice out there, he's still going to get a ton of volume. We see that offense like to take deep shots. And I think Marquise Brown is the perfect wide receiver for that. I like him a lot. I'm buying him. And another wide receiver that excels in deep shots and stuff is Jamison Williams. Another guy I'm buying wide receiver 57 right now, wide receiver 50 on keep trade cut. But you know, I just like Jamison Williams. I can't quit him. And we haven't really had a true year from him. And it's because he was injured year one. And then last year he had the suspension. But towards the end of the year, we finally saw some production and some usage. Week 15, he had seven targets. Week 16, he had six targets. Week 17, he had three targets and 69 yards. Then in week 19, he had two targets and some carries. Week 20, he had four targets and some carries. And then week 21 in the playoffs. Two touchdowns, one receiving, one rushing, both of them very explosive plays, looked alive on the biggest stage. And I think he's just finally kind of earned the trust of his teammates and coaching staff to where now going into year three, a full off season and everything, you know, that he'll be actually used. And again, I just like this Lions offense a lot. And he's the cheapest one. And it's just, I don't see why you wouldn't bet on that profile. Former first round pick one of the best wide receivers that and would have been the wide receiver one in his draft class if he didn't get injured. We've seen electric speed. We've even seen really good run blocking from him, which I find important, especially for that Lions team. And so I'm going to go with him, especially with Josh Reynolds leaving. That was a guy who just kept taking away an odd amount of targets, even if it wasn't a ton. I think that those will be reallocated. And I think Jamison Williams is actually going to be a piece of this offense now. And he clearly has the deep shot role. He was fifth in average depth of target last year. And that's a role that no one else on the offense can do. Sam Laporte and Amon Ross St. Brown over the middle of the field. Jameer Gibbs out of the backfield. And Jamison Williams is the deep guy. 
And on that offense, with how many points they're going to have to score, I think he'll at least be a wide receiver 36. And that's at like 20 spots in value gain. And he's going to have some huge spike weeks. So definitely in best ball, be getting these guys. But I think in Dynasty, you could be getting him too. Because again, they used a first round pick on him. He's got a great profile. He's had now great production in the playoffs. I like some JMO. Give me some JMO. Dang, I had a lot of players to buy. I guess we are talking 20 buys. Tyler Lockett. Tyler Lockett, guys. I talked about DK Metcalf, but why not Tyler Lockett? Wide receiver 66, wide receiver 68 in keep trade cut. 31 years old, but still producing. Has had over 11 points per game in three straight years. Has had over 1,300 air yards in three straight years. Has had five or more touchdowns in three straight years. I mean, this guy does nothing but produce. And every single offseason is incredibly easy to acquire. And then every single regular season, he's impossible to acquire because the dude who has him is flexing him every single week. Tyler Lockett's a guy you should be buying. Nothing else to say about it. And really... Quentin Johnston, I don't like this one as much, and so this is going to be short, but wide receiver 69, wide receiver 59 on keep trade cut. Uh, Last year was just terrible, and I think 80% of that was the coaching staff. It was just he was not used properly, and then with the injuries, unfortunately, he was forced to play a role that he's not good at. I think now with Jim Harbaugh that he will be able to scheme him well and use him properly. I'm not sure what that means. I really don't. But if you'll remember, Jim Harbaugh, Michigan coach, went up against TCU, and TCU used Quentin Johnston on a nice screen that he broke for a touchdown. The rest of the game, he was kind of shut down. But either way, I'm sure Jim Harbaugh remembers that, and it's like, oh, yeah, we can use Quentin Johnston in screens, which barely happened last year. So I just think seeing that and maybe some other just you know, manufactured touches for him will lead to more production. Again, I'm not sure what it means. I still don't think he's like, that good but i think he could be fine and at the very least i think that this is probably the bottom of his market especially with him being on the chargers now who have no wide receivers even if they draft one he's still got some room for volume and if they use him on jet sweeps random screens drags maybe a couple other just smaller routes i know he doesn't have a great route tree but i think it'll be okay like i i I just think it'll be fine so i don't know that's all i've got for him i'm not gonna like defend him too much but you know, I, I think it's fine. I think it's fine. And another wide receiver that I think will be fine and maybe even really good is Jahan Dotson. This is one that interests me. I'm not going to lie. I was not buying him at all last year. I did not understand the price. I was not even really buying him as rookie season. But now I'm buying Jahan Dotson. Right now he's wide receiver 74 on player profiler, wide receiver 52 on keep trade cut. And he has been valued as high as wide receiver 18. I mean, this was a guy who coming out of his rookie year had seven touchdowns in only 12 games and was on fire averaging over 10 points per game. But last year was not good. Only averaged seven points per game, only had four touchdowns in a full 17 game season and only 500 yards in the full season. So played five more games last year, had less yards, less touchdowns. Not great, Bob. But Just not a good offense. It was really weirdly run. And for some reason, he wasn't getting targeted a ton. It was going to like Curtis Samuel. Even Terry McLaurin had a down year, right? But, you know, now Curtis Samuel is gone. Now they're bringing in a new quarterback, especially one that looks like is going to be able to sling it. And Cliff Kingsbury is the offensive coordinator who passes the ball a ton. And somehow, you know, Jahan Dotson with, you know, how bad of a year he had last year, still ran the fourth most routes. So obviously the opportunity is there. And we saw a 100-yard, 10-target game with a touchdown against Philadelphia last year. So he obviously still has the skills. Former first-round pick, everything else is trending up. So I'm going to try to get myself some Jahan Dotson because, again, I don't see why not. A better offensive coordinator, a better quarterback, more opportunity with Curtis Samuel gone. And so, yeah, give myself some Jahan Dotson. That's the quarterbacks and wide receivers. Let's talk running backs now. Oh, running back I'll be buying everywhere I can is Kenneth Walker. Kenneth Walker right now, I just don't get it because he is basically the best running back in the league. Like like if like an NFL just between the tackles running back, Kenneth Walker's the one you want. It used to be Nick Chubb, now it's Kenneth Walker. Just an absolute dog and has literally literally been the RB1. RB1 in Dynasty just a season ago. And right now he's sitting at RB11. And this is a guy 
who in every single game that he's seen at least 20 touches, which has only been 11 times somehow, has averaged 125 rush yards, a touchdown, and 20 points per game in all of those games that he averaged 20 or more touches. And I just think that with a new regime coming in, they are not going to be tied to Zach Charbonnet's second round draft capital. They're going to look at these two running backs as they walk into the room. They're going to look at Kenneth Walker and can just tell that this is an absolute different type of animal than Zach Charbonnet is, and they need to feed him. They're bringing in a defensive coordinator to be the head coach. And again, they're bringing in a Pac-12 offensive coordinator to be the new coordinator. It's going to be just a more electric offense in general. We've already seen Kenneth Walker excel with screens and stuff. He still can catch the ball out of the backfield. He was fourth in yards per reception last year. And again, just when he gets fed, he's a monster. I just think right now at his value, I don't think it can go down. I think he's still a stud. He was third in evaded tackles last year, second in juke rate. The explosiveness is there. The elusiveness is there. The opportunity is there. The potential for the offense to get better is there. So give me sell some Kenneth Walker. I like him a lot. I would be using a lot of running backs to tear down to him. If your name isn't Jameer Gibbs, Bijan Robinson, or Brees Hall, I am using or Christian McCaffrey, I'm using you to get Kenneth Walker Plus. If I have A Chain, I'm going for Kenneth Walker. If I have ETN, I'm going for Kenneth Walker. That's what you got to do, right? I just like that a lot. If I've got Saquon, I'm going for Kenneth Walker. Give me some canine, guys. He's a dog. 99th percentile speed burst, 40 yard dash at his size. Give me some Kenneth Walker. I mean, it's crazy. It's just crazy. And another running back that has completely plummeted in value is Tony Pollard. Before his injury, he was up there at RB5. People were talking about Tony Pollard as like the best running back to roster in Dynasty. And now he's sitting at RB21 on player profiler, 25 on keep trade cut. And I just don't get it. In fact, Tony Pollard right now is cheaper than Tajay Spears. And yet Tony Pollard is going to have more opportunity than Tajay Spears next year and probably do better with it. Tony Pollard is still elusive, explosive, and a good running back. We saw it last year. Last year in week 11 is when he said he was healthy and he went out and had like 20 points. And from week 11 onward, he only had three games under 15 points through the rest of the season. He was scoring touchdowns. He was catching passes. He was showing those breakaway runs. And now he's going to a team with a projected great system for his skill set. Again, the Tennessee Titans, they're going to pass the ball a ton. A ton. They are investing in that passing game. They've got Calvin Ridley. They already have DeAndre Hopkins. They have two pass catching running backs. They're investing in that offensive line. They went out and made a splash trade for a cornerback because they think that teams are going to be passing against them. Uh, so yeah, Tony Pollard, easy buy right now. Easy, easy, easy buy. Get him. And also, Joe Mixon. Joe Mixon, RB32 right now on player profiler, RB20 and keep trade cut. So his market is going to vary. But if he's on a team right now that's not competing, I think that you could easily get him uh, for a pretty decent price. And even generally, you could probably downgrade at running back to get him and a nice cherry on top if you're looking to compete this year. This is just another running back who's done nothing but produce. The efficiency is never really there from Joe Mixon, but the volume and everything is. He's averaged 15 or more points per game in four straight seasons, which is just unbelievable. And over the last three years has scored a total of 35 touchdowns. That's very, very good. He's an efficient, not really efficient, but he's just a consistent runner and also a good pass catcher. Last year is eighth in rush yards with over a thousand and 12th in receiving yards with over 300 receiving yards and 50 receptions. And now he's on the Houston Texans. Oh. I mean, that's an awesome offense to be a part of right now. And he's cheap to acquire. He's probably still going to catch a ton of passes, probably still going to score a ton of touchdowns, and probably still get to about a 1,000 all-purpose yards and be the main running back in, in this offense. So give me some Joe Mixon. And give me James Conner, the last running back I'm going to talk about, sitting at RB38 on player profiler, 35 on keep trade cut. And another guy who has done nothing but produce James Conner 15 or more points per game in all three seasons. He's been in Arizona top 13 in points per game in all of those seasons. And last year finished sixth in rush yards was also ninth in yards per carry eighth in juke rate, 10th in evaded tackles, seventh in breakaway run rate and sixth in breakaway runs at his age. And with all that volume, he's still incredibly 
efficient. And you can look and see what he did in the fantasy football playoffs and towards it the last five weeks of the season. This is what James Conner scored for his fantasy football teams. 22.5 points, 17.9 points, 22.2 points, 26.3 points, and 30.4 points. All of those games, 17 or more points the last five weeks of the season, the most important part of the fantasy football season, and he was winning people championships last year, literally scored the number one amount of running back points the last week of the season. Fourth in fantasy football championship week, fourth in semifinals week. I mean, the guy's just productive. And go get yourself some James Conner. Go get yourself some James Conner. Even if they draft a running back, I think he'll be fine. And I don't know if they will. They have a lot of needs on that team. They went out and they got Michael Carter, Amari DiMercato. Uh, they have someone else, too, that's back there. Uh, yeah, Keontae Ingram. So either way, the running back room is already kind of full. And it's just a total bell cow by James Conner, who is producing year in, year out. So that's all the running backs, wide receivers, and quarterbacks. Let's go ahead and move on now to the tight ends. And we're going to start with Michael Mayer. Michael Mayer right now is sitting at tight end 15 in player profiler, tight end 13 on keep trade cut. But going into last year was sitting at tight end seven because Michael Mayer was viewed similarly as Brock Bowers. He was viewed as the best tight end in college football his entire career. People loved him and thought he would dominate at the NFL. But unfortunately for him, he landed in a really rough spot not great quarterback play, just not a very competitive team in general, and just was not given a ton of opportunity. But still had the 12th highest yards per target and was ninth in yards per reception amongst tight ends last year and was even second in contested catch rate. So I think that he's going to be okay. You can even look at ninth in target separation. So he was getting open. So I think with some better quarterback play, whether it's Gardner Minshew or a rookie quarterback that they bring in, Michael Mayer should have a better year two than he did his rookie season. And kind of just reminds me of Trey McBride, where it was like, you know, just kind of disappointed the rookie season, but then totally explodes in year two, especially down the stretch. I think Michael Mayer, we need to remember the college profile, even at a higher college dominator rating than a lot of tight ends. Just an absolute stud at Notre Dame. I mean, was their entire offense. That's going to mean something at some point at the NFL level. It just, you know, maybe Devontae Adams has to retire. Or maybe they need a new quarterback. Whatever it is, though, at some point, Michael Mayer is going to be awesome to roster in Dynasty. It may not be next season. It probably will be next season. But at the very least, it'll be like 2025. And right now, at his price tag of like tight end 15, I would I would just go ahead and get in on him and see what happens, right? I mean, if like think about all the people that bought Trey McBride this time last year, how happy they are right now. Think about that with Michael Mayer. Another tight end that's pretty cheap despite being very expensive at one point is Pat Fryermuth. Pat Fryermuth was the tight end six just a couple seasons ago after a great rookie year, and it's just been meh the last two seasons. But a lot of that is because Kenny Pickett, Mitchell Trubisky, and Mason Rudolph had been his quarterback, and he'd been injured, and Matt Canada was the offensive coordinator. So I think Pat Fryermuth has a chance to go back and be the Pat Fryermuth that people fell in love with in his rookie season, and he should be consistent. I would be surprised if he doesn't finish as at least the tight end 16 next season. I mean, let's think about it. Deontay Johnson's gone. Arthur Smith loves tight ends, even ones named Jonu Smith. So he's going to look at Pat Fryermuth and love him. And he's going to have more opportunity because Deontay Johnson's gone. So I don't really understand the Pat Fryermuth value right now, especially with how expensive he's been and with things only kind of getting better in terms of his potential opportunity. And I was, I've been out on Pat Fryermuth. I called him Pat Fryer Pooh on the show last year because I thought he was overvalued. But now I'm back in, ladies and gentlemen. Now I'm back in on Pat Fryer Muth, the Muth himself, not Pat Fryer Mid or, or Pooh, but Fra Pat Fryer Muth, the dude, the man, the good tight end that you should be getting at tight end 16. And the final dynasty buy, dynasty buy number 20, the final tight end, Jelani Woods. This is just a guy I can't quit. You guys remember. You guys remember. I was telling you guys to buy him last year. I'll take the L. I didn't think he'd miss the entire season with a hamstring injury, but he did. And it's unfortunate. However, I think the Indianapolis Colts, if they don't draft out Brock Bowers, are going to be utilizing Jelani Woods a lot next season. I think they're ready for him to return. The organization spent a third round pick on him when he was a rookie. He's 6'7", 257 pounds, 
with an absolutely insane athletic profile. And in his rookie season, showed a couple flashes. He had a two-touchdown game against the Kansas City Chiefs uh, in Week 2. One of those touchdowns was a game winner in overtime. I mean, that's pretty awesome. He also had an eight-reception, 98-yard game against Pittsburgh in Week 12, his rookie season. So he did well with volume. I think that Jelani Woods has shown a little bit of a flash his rookie season and is now going into a Colts offense after sitting out all year that utilizes the tight end a ton. If you were to cumulatively put together Mo Alley Cox, Kylan Granson, Will Mallory, and Drew Ogletree, you would have 70 receptions, 883 yards, and 11 touchdowns by that tight end. And that is just an incredible an incredible season. And if he could even get like 600 yards and eight touchdowns next year, then you're already talking about value for a guy that is probably free to acquire. You could probably get Jelani Woods for free. But with that potential opportunity, with the draft capital, with the workout metrics, I don't I, buy Jelani Woods. Get Jelani. He'll be back this year. He will. And you just got to hope the Colts don't draft Brock Bowers. But it, it, if they don't, Sky's the limit for Jelani Woods, ladies and gentlemen. So those are our top 20 dynasty buys. Bryce Young, Jared Goff, Matthew Stafford, Kenneth Walker, Tony Pollard, Joe Mixon, James Conner, DK Metcalf, Nico Collins, Cooper Cup, Christian Watson, Marquise Brown, DeAndre Hopkins, Jamison Williams, Tyler Lockett, Quentin Johnston, Jahan Dotson, Michael Mayer, Pat Fryermuth, and Jelani Woods. So that's all the buys. Let's go ahead and pop into the chat, answer any questions, and then we'll sign out of here. Let's go ahead and scroll to the top. What's going on, everyone? Thanks again for tuning in. Who's wide receiver one with the Rams? It's Cooper Cup. Are you buying all Titans this year? Yes. <laughs> yes, I am, actually. <laughs> I, have a, I have one team with both Tony Pollard and Tasha Spears, so I'm covered. I have DeAndre Hopkins in a league. The only thing I haven't gotten now is Will Levis. Actually, I guess I am not really buying Calvin Ridley. I'm not really buying Calvin Ridley. I think he's too expensive. But I want Will Levis. I do really want Will Levis. In fact, I should have thrown him in this. Buy Will Levis, guys. He's another quarterback. 21 dynasty buys. Buy Will Levis. <laughs> Let's see. Go ahead and scroll down. Uh, check out some more. Anyone know when a dad joke becomes a dad joke? When it becomes apparent, good one, Harry Snowman. That's a good one. Where does Williams finish this year? Yeah, I think at least wide receiver 36. I think wide receiver three is good. Um, wide receiver Jahan Dotson was 14-12. I don't know what that means. But yeah, he was he was expensive, and now he's not. Uh, lots of hyperbole on today's show. I just mean best like pure running back. Like, it, it, like, like just like an old school version of a running back. Like that's what I mean when I say best running back in the league. I don't mean it by a hyperbole. Like if I'm just like, like just when I picture running back, I just picture that guy who's taking a run up the middle and can break it for 60 yards. And there are not many running backs in today's league that can do it like Kenneth Walker. In fact, I don't think there's really any running back in today's league that can do it like Kenneth Walker can right now. Even Derrick Henry doesn't have the explosiveness Kenneth Walker has right now. Dude's an absolute stud. If he was on the 49ers or Ravens, where would he finish? About the same he would on the Seahawks. I'm not going to lie. I like the Seahawks offense. Good offensive line. I think the offense is going to be fine. I think he would get limited on the Ravens offense for sure. On the 49ers, I think he could be a stud. But right now, Christian McCaffrey's there. So I, I think he's better served on the Seahawks. Um, cool. That looks like it is it for the questions, unless there's one over here on Instagram. What do you think about Corlin Sutton or Marvin Mims? Between the two, I would be buying Marvin Mims. I, I'm just not a big Sutton guy at his age, and I think Marvin Mims is going to get some more opportunity this year. I think they want to feed him the ball to make up for his uh, no usage really last year. So that is everything I have for you guys. Thank you so much for tuning in. This was another fun episode of Wake and Taken. You guys were a great audience as always. Don't forget to hit the like button. Don't forget to subscribe to Player Profiler and turn on that bell so you can get notified when we go live. Tons of great shows happening here on Player Profiler day in, day out. You don't want to miss it. So go ahead, like the video, subscribe, and get ready to tune back in tomorrow at 10 a.m. Eastern on the Player Profiler YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. 
I'll be joined tomorrow by a very special guest, Brendan Booth from the Player Profiler News Desk. So make sure you get ready for that. You guys all have a magnificent Monday and a wonderful rest of your week. Peace. Hey, I want to thank you for being part of this broadcast. If you have any thoughts on it, leave a comment. If you enjoyed it, make sure you leave a like. And if you want to see more shows on the Player Profiler channel, subscribe to it. That's how we know you want more.